Although racing pigeons can be traced back to the rock dove, there is little resemblance to modern pigeons due to many years of crossbreeding and selection. As far back as the 16th century BC, through Europe, carrier pigeons were used to communicate by kings and rulers. It was not until 1818 in Belgium that the sport of pigeon racing first began. At around 160 kilometres, this was considered a long race. By the late 1800s, the sport had become popular in France, Great Britain and the far shores of the United States. This was also the time when Australia started organising races, with pigeons introduced by European settlers. Often known as a working class sport, over the years thousands of people of all means have been attracted to keeping and racing pigeons. The pigeon's home in an overall ability has also developed over the last 200 years. Today's racing pigeons will compete at distances of 150 to 1000 kilometres. Before we explore the excitement and how-to of racing pigeons, let's reflect on how they save lives. Due to the excellent homing ability and speed of pigeons, they played an important role in World War I and II. Used to transport messages back to their mobile lofts behind the lines, a small number would accompany the military, navy and air force into battle. Many lives were saved by pigeons in wars, and many pigeons died saving these lives. Whilst I was visiting the two Dickon Medal recipients in um, Canberra at the Australian War Memorial, um, the curators were kind enough to take out of storage the certificate that they received the medal and then the two pigeons themselves and um, they're beautifully preserved. The taxidermy process is an incredible process and um, their plume is, is in pristine condition so I was um, you know very lucky to um, spend the day um, with these two pigeons and um, you know having the opportunity to draw them um, in situ. So we're very grateful to the um, Australian War Memorial. In October 1942, the Catalina, which was a British um, warplane, had hit a wave of horrific weather during a mission under Captain Ted Southern. Now he was forced to ditch into the Atlantic and radio transmission was lost and hence they were the times when carrier pigeons were used. Other communications failed. So the details were written and put into a leg capsule and a group of carrier pigeons were released and they were lost at sea, however White Vision made it back to base in um, Shetland, Scotland. And she flew battered and she flew 60 miles in gale force winds with no visibility. And she delivered the vital message to the RAF and the location of the Catalina was recovered. 11 lives were actually saved on that particular day and, um, and she was awarded the Dickon Medal in December um, in 1942. The joy and admiration of racing pigeons are no greater than when a pigeon comes from a race. After waiting for hours, you first spot a pigeon from afar. As it approaches, you see it fold its wings and dive towards the loft landing board. No matter what distance it has flown, your heart beats that little bit faster until the bird has timed in. The love and bond from the pigeon to the loft and you to the pigeon is never better than at that moment.
Keeping pigeons first starts by building a loft. You can find all types of race lofts, some very modest, others like holiday resorts for pigeons. If your loft is comfortable for you and the pigeons, good birds can win to any loft. The mating of pigeons for a new fly is probably one of the more daunting tasks they have to do to breed, you know, the anticipation of breeding good young ones. Um, what I did when I first started, uh, I had pigeons given to me by uh, neighbouring flyers and when we got those, we asked them to tell us how to make them together because they've got the experience, they knew what they were, and that helps. Uh, over the years, um, I, of course, have to select my own birds to breed off, and I breed my pigeons by performance, um, by bloodline, and it's all about trying to concentrate the potential within the bird. When I make pigeons up, I like them to, when I put them in the box together, that they do look as though they belong together. Um, they match, uh, you haven't got too much of an extreme, they look good together. And that's just a subjective thing that'll come with keeping pigeons for a long time. When pairing up, there's many theories to what's the best method to put the birds together. Some people believe in eye sign, some people will just put two different colour eyes together and others will look at the body. If, a, if the cockbird's a bit big or the hen's a bit big, they'll put a smaller one to try to balance the race team. In the end, the best way that we've seen, and many lofts, and there's no doubt, is to put performance to performance. Now, if there was a, a non-pigeon flyer watching the show thinking, gee, this seems all right, how can you go about obtaining pigeons, getting involved with these one-off races? What would you suggest them to do? Very simple. The first place where he buys his pigeon food will even put him in the right spot. If there's a fodder store somewhere, they will know someone who's got pigeons. Look in their local Google, is there a pigeon club near me? And I guarantee the people will help him out straight away. Even if he hasn't got time to race, some will help him build a little loft and get a couple of pairs of pigeons. But now we've sort of branched out a bit to the one loft racing that they're starting to bring in over here in Australia, which is really good. Your, your average person in a backyard who can only have a couple of pairs of pigeons doesn't even have to let them out, but can breed some babies and put them in these one loft races. This hen here won the Gold Coast race. She won, I think, 45,000 in one hit, which it's not too many greyhounds or racehorses even win that. Now that's her. The one next door I'll show you. She, that was a couple of years ago. Last year, the hen next door ran second. She won 30,000. And the same year I got third as well with that one, and that one 15. So here, you've got nearly 90, nearly 90,000 in prize money out of three pigeons. Now, anyone in their backyard can get one or two pairs, breed them, put them in for very little cost, and it's a luck of the draw like a racehorse or a greyhound. So I do think pigeon racing is really on the up. So, so the new fancy who's just uh, decided to get into pigeons, I guess the important thing to have in the back of your mind all the time is that we are doing this for fun. So keep it simple and keep it fun and make sure that you keep enjoying yourself. Uh, pigeons are a fantastic choice of, as far as keeping a, a bird. Uh, they don't have the uh, behavioural and environmental challenges that a lot of um, uh, other birds do. Uh, and, and pigeons have been domesticated for a long period of time and they're naturally a, a very robust bird. And provided you can 
uh, meet the uh, basics of requirements, uh, basic requirements of just care. It's not that hard to keep them healthy. Uh, it's always easier, I think, if you can find someone, an established fancier in your local area, uh, who's had pigeons for some time, and uh, uh, he'll be able to sort of guide you along. Um, uh, an experienced eye is very useful. Um, uh, people who aren't familiar with uh, pigeons, uh, they often think they all look the same, and yet uh, to an experienced pigeon fancier, they're all very different, and signs that uh, might go subtle signs that might go unnoticed to a less experienced eye can be can be very obvious to them. Uh, so I think a good starting point uh, would be, if possible, to um, uh, try and get in contact with local club and uh, and perhaps someone who lives nearby uh, who raises pigeons and can be your mentor. Um, if that's not possible, um, uh, perhaps introduce yourself to a local fancier and try and uh, get some uh, birds from uh, you know, someone who's very familiar with the sport, uh, recognised fancier, uh, and birds that are, are, are essentially healthy. Uh, These two babies here are getting, they're not ready to wean, but you can see at the age they are, they're starting to reach that stage. They're, under their wing, the feathers are starting to burst through, so, you know, they're reaching the point where within a week, See, this one's got even more feathers broken under the wing. Which is normally, when they break all those feathers, they're normally hopping down on the floor. These birds have hopped out of the nest box, out of the nest bowl, and are walking around the nest box now. Once all young pigeons have been homed and flown strong around the loft, the fun of preparing the birds for racing begins. This is about six weeks out from the first race. Hello everybody, my name is David Tournel. I come from uh, Flemish Brabant in Belgium. Uh, I will uh, tell you my system with the young birds. Um, end of May, we start with the road training of the young birds and uh, we start very, very short in the beginning. We start at one kilometer the first time, the second, the day after, we go to two kilometer, and uh, so we go up third, three kilometer, three kilometer, then we go to six, two times, then we go to 13, two times, then we go to 22 times, then we go to 32 times, and then we go to 35 till 40, also two times. And when everything going good, then they are ready, go to the first race in the club.
holes where the fan force that it comes in over the top of the hampers. That's where that, it's out of those holes. Come on up when they're 15 degrees hits in, like the top fans come on as well. As well as those other ones. Water there, they we run the water, we got the pump and water things up there. And then we just tip them over and they run down through these down at both ends and out the bottom of the truck. But of course we have to we feed in these as well, so we then take, take the feed out, tip the feed out and then put them back in and water afterwards. Sink and uh, cupboard for food, stove. Some forward thinking federations conduct junior race programs, giving the very young and teenagers the opportunity to compete and win trophies. Pigeon racing can also be a family sport, where everyone can get involved at different levels of commitment. Also, a sport for a person heading towards retirement and looking for friendship and a hobby from the backyard. The Devonport Club Rooms boxing for the last race of the year. 700 plus kilometres this, most flyers. We have uh, Toll Tasmania again. It's a uh, their nominated charity is Camp Quality, and we're happy to support that. We're looking at about 420 birds who will head, head over Thursday, arrive in Melbourne Friday, taken to Neil in the northwest corner of Victoria. The eager wait for the flies has started, and will turn to excitement once the first bird reaches home. Here we are waiting for pigeons to come home. A bit windy today. The trees are really moving. So what time are they expected time? Well, they should be long now. Uh, pretty soon. Here's one now. Come on. that they have some you know the magnetic thing in their beaks here and they're able to make it back to home base or to race I mean I, I think they're just beautiful intelligent creatures yeah, we're blessed to have them they're beautiful yeah,